Welcome, warriors, once again to the worst fighting game. My epic quest to swim through the garbage juice at the bottom of the fighting game barrel. Last time, I fought through a variety of erotic animals and came to the determination that brutal Paws of Fury was just as bad, but not worse, than Criticom. This time around, thanks to those of you at the Flophouse VIP Patreon who voted in an exclusive poll, I'm taking a look at another 16-bit fighter that's largely been forgotten by pretty much everyone. Oi. Ah. Oi. Ah. <laughs> ah, now I bet you all remember. 1994's Balls 3D was an attempt to bridge the gap between 2D visuals and 3D movement. And if we're discussing it today, in this part of my channel, in this part of the internet, it's safe to say it was not successful in that mission. It was the first title developed by PF Magic, a San Francisco-based studio that has a fairly interesting history. By the way, the PF of PF Magic stands for... I have absolutely no idea. The company was originally formed to create a cutting-edge video game service that they wanted to pitch to both Sega and AT&T, a service that would allow Genesis players to play games with each other over something called the internet. Yeah, well, if it's not really rollback, then who the hell cares? Uh, anyway, the proposed cost of this device, which PF Magic unironically called the Edge, was supposedly far too high for AT&T to invest in, so they pulled out at the last minute, leaving the team at PF holding the magic bag. With not enough funding, as well as Sega and others going on to devise their own online solutions, PF Magic decided to spend the money they did have towards an actual game, one that they would retrofit to work with The Edge later on. Now, what was popular in the 90s and would work well in a competitive environment? That's right, good old button bashers. And designing a game where you bash buttons is exactly what they did. With no real experience under their belts, the PF Magic team did have some graphical and programming knowledge, and thus decided they would build the game and its characters with an out-of-the-box, spherical nature. Only the most sophisticated gaming experience ever created by humans, and it's spherical! <laughs> spherical! <laughs> What this would do is simplify the characters so that processing power could be used elsewhere, like being able to create the illusion of 3D space with rotation and scaling even on underpowered 16-bit machines. This meant that the fighters themselves would need to look incredibly basic, especially when compared to what Sega was making in the arcades and what was being produced by Rare. Constructing humanoid characters with nothing but balls tends to look pretty similar, so PF Magic decided to go hard on the idea, embracing it more than just a graphical technique and instead building a whole world around the idea. It was balls, it was 3D, and it was 90s as fuck. Leaning into the gross-out, crass humor so synonymous with the decade. The stages of balls also had to be designed to be as simple as possible to allow for solid frame rates, so the team felt compelled to fill them with billboards spouting the most random shite you've ever seen in an effort to keep players entertained. While you'll be flailing around with your opponent, you'll be told to kiss, blow, or suck a variety of everyday objects. It's some wild shit to be sure, but it is memorable, I suppose. The game was designed for the Genesis and the SNES, with both machines handling the graphics in unique ways. While the SNES version looks better overall with a fully textured floor, courtesy of Mode 7, as well as more robust colors and shading, the Genesis version benefits from faster action and a better frame rate. The soundtrack also varies drastically between the two, and while most of the compositions are really annoying with random digitized shouts, yells, and cartoon farts placed seemingly at random, the Genesis's unique mechanical sounding audioscape winds up being the less irritating of the two.
The best of both worlds, however, comes in the form of the 3DO version, marketed as a director's cut and contained a overhauled UI, extra characters, and a CD soundtrack. While I don't have access to this version of the game directly, the improvements seem to actually improve on the game. The action is fast and fluid, the soundtrack is much better produced, the graphics are the best they could possibly be, and the little tweaks to stuff like the select screen and the UI are big steps up. Unfortunately, no matter what version you play, when it comes to actually, yeah, playing it, Balls 3D is still absolute balls. Oh, I'm sure no one on YouTube has ever made that joke before. So I'll reiterate once more, the 3DO director's cut looks and has far and away the best presentation of the three. The UI is much improved across the board and generally has more charm and character. Where the game lacks some character is in its characters. The, yeah. The roster of roly-poly warriors is composed of vague concepts rather than robust archetypes. We have a clown named Boomer. Okay, okay, Boomer. A animal called Crusher, something that resembles a woman who goes by the name of Divine, Yo, watch the gonads. an athletic humanoid dubbed Turbo, there's a caveman thing called Kronk, oh, yeah. it's all coming together. some big hulking gym bro named Bruiser, Yoko, a creature who passes gas a lot, and finally Tsunami, who I think is supposed to be a sumo rustler. Can, can anyone confirm that? Oh, before I forget, the 3DO version has one added character called Zombie, who could be a vampire for all I know. There's also a selection of bosses of both the sub and final varieties. While they are not selectable from the start, they will be if you defeat them in the arcade mode, good luck with that. Now, I will say that some of these guys are at least more distinct. There's what's clearly an ostrich named Guggler, no, jug, no, Guggler, okay, a kangaroo named Bounder, predating Roger by a year, T-Rex, an awesome name for a dinosaur, a genie called Lamprey, <laughs> I see what you did there, and finally Jester, the game's big bad fuck this guy. Remember how much fun it is whenever Street Fighter 3's Gil does his resurrection? Well, Jester's is a thousand times worse. Looking at all these fighters, it is nice that PF Magic was able to squeeze that round stone to get as many characters out of it as they could. All told, there's 14 when you add in the director's cut, which was no doubt due to how little memory each fighter gobbled or guggled up. Now while some aspects of the game's presentation, its audio and sound effects mostly, can grate on the nerves, <laughs> after a while, you start to get used to it, like a hot tub filled with super annoying people and their children. Yeah, it's pretty irritating, but at the end of the day, there's this baseline of pleasantness you can ease yourself into. You just have to block out the sound of random yells, burps, and other bodily functions. This is because PF Magic made everything so wacky that it winds up eking out its own identity. If you grew up on Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, or Primal Rage, you probably didn't enjoy Balls' style and attitude, because if you were into the more cartoony stuff, you probably would have opted for Clay Fighter over this, which I'm sure many people did. So while the rounded nature of the game's graphics may not have been to everyone's tastes, it's at least unique, especially when you consider the director's cut. You can definitely see the improvements when you stack it up against the Genesis version, for example, so I have to give PF Magic some credit here. They looked at the 16-bit original and tried their best to polish it, which isn't something I can say about, oh, I don't know, Brutal Unleashed Above the Claw, which was actually worse in a lot of areas. When you gaze upon Ball's 3D's main menu, you'll be presented with two options, one player and two player. Pretty self-explanatory. 
Once again, you gotta cut them some slack here. It was 94 after all, but once you go beyond 95 or 96, you need to start offering at least a training mode, which is one reason why I hated Criticom as much as I did. What's far more interesting here though is Balls' mechanics, which are shockingly robust when you consider uh, everything. Each character has both short and long range punches or kicks, with their limbs stretching out slightly to make up the distance for the latter. In terms of movement, you can sort of sidestep around the arena in a circular motion as well as jump, and while it takes some getting used to, it's fairly functional. Each character comes equipped with almost a dozen moves they can do, with most of them being accomplished with simple button taps. Not all of them are really flashy, but a few lean into the game's comedic style pretty well, such as whacking your opponent like you're playing golf or balancing on them like a circus ball. There's also grappling, where both fighters pound buttons to win the grapple to perform a follow-up throw, not to mention an actual wake-up game where you can roll out of the way after a knockdown. Then there's fatalities that can be done when your opponent's balls are super low, as well as a post-shatter beatdown sort of attack, which is actually pretty cool. Furthermore, there's taunts, which are stackable buffs to your character's next move unless they get hit, which is different from begging, an input that you can do when you're low on balls which will refill it if the animation is not interrupted. In addition to that, every character can morph into every character with a Shang Tsung-esque button input, and because everyone's composed of the same shapes, it loads instantly. There's even more minutia beyond this, just Wow, PF Magic didn't just slap things together and call it a day, there's actual interesting mechanics here, especially for 1994. So yeah, that, that all sounds pretty good. Hopefully there's nothing that completely ruins it. So yeah, here we go. Despite its wacky and distinct style and an intriguing number of moves, mechanics, and options, none of these things actually coalesce to make for a compelling game. Because of the way the characters are built and how the camera will swing behind you sometimes, it's incredibly hard to ascertain whether you're actually hitting your opponent or if they're blocking. Now I suppose if you keep your eyes glued to the ball bars, life balls? You can glean that information, but I don't think that's a sound way to play a fighter. Usually, hit sparks are overlaid to give you feedback on whether or not an attack is landing, and in the case of most of Balls' special moves and all of its normals, it's tough for it to feel like anything other than a random slap fest. Some things, like grapple attacks or throws, do feel pretty satisfying, but the other 90% of the game does not, as so much of it is so ill-defined that it barely feels like it exists. It's like playing a fighting game where only the motion capture data is playable, and the characters themselves just haven't been built around it yet. When you then combine that with the other negatives, like the weird jumping and the mysterious vague hit and hurt boxes, the novelty of Ball's 3D fades within seconds of picking up a controller. It really seems like an idea that was both ahead of and behind the times. 16-bit and early underpowered 32-bit systems like the 3DO just couldn't render the characters in enough detail to make the moment-to-moment -moment fighting feel like a real thing. But machines like the PlayStation or Saturn were so advanced that polygons were the far better solution to simulating 3D fighting. All this to say that the feel of these balls is anything but smooth. Maybe because of the graphics and the novelty of spheres, balls received plenty of positive reviews back in 1994, especially Sega-focused magazines which threw out 80s and 90s like they were going out of style. The Super Nintendo version does seem like the most harshly reviewed out of the three, and I'm inclined to agree with that, as its slower speed and frame rate does the gameplay absolutely no favors. Despite that warm critical response, the commercial one wasn't so hot. Maybe due to these box arts, many a child had no idea what Balls even was, and squinting at the tiny screenshots on the back probably didn't help illuminate its mystery. 
So yeah, it was a massive commercial failure. And with PF Magic's Edge technology being cancelled as they could never find a partner who was willing to invest, the company found themselves at a crossroad. Its co-founder, Rob Fulop, wasn't new to the video game industry. He had previously created a number of FMV games like the infamous Night Trap. And once PF Magic's innuendo-filled fighting game failed, he decided they needed to pivot into more family-friendly entertainment. Thus, they created the Pets franchise. God, there were fans of the letter Z. Which then spun into the Dogs and Cats and Babies franchise. Which then spawned into a series that wound up selling over 22 million units altogether. Most of these games were published under Ubisoft's umbrella, who bought the IP in the mid 2000s, whereupon I was forced to test several of them. And no, I don't want to talk further about that chapter of my life. Because right now, we need to finish the balls chapter. And Honestly, I went in expecting to hate this game, but for the reasons I already outlined, it's kind of more disappointing than anything else. They sort of had something here. Maybe if it had been built for the ground up on the PlayStation or Saturn, it could have translated into something far more solid and playable. The 16-bit versions are impressive from a technical sense, but that won't factor all that much in my ruling, which places these balls in the fairly stinky tier, which I feel is pretty appropriate because, because it's another testicle joke. So, there you have it. Another worst fighting game is in the books. In the pocket. Out of sight. And if you'd like to throw another cursed rock in my path as I continue this meandering journey, do so in the comments below, over on my Twitter, or become a balloon artist and send your fighting game suggestion to the Flophouse VIP Patreon. And I'll see you next time on the worst fighting game.